Now then, so, at the minute we've got Mark's mini back in. Um, it's up there. I've got the engine with it, so I'm putting this. Quay fifth. Spin it around. Can you see Quay fifth? that back on Mark. And now I'm up to the point of fitting it. So I thought I might as well do a video on fitting the diff because you've got to shim them on A series engines. So I'll just turn the camera around. So on these, you've got to shim the diffs, otherwise, you'll knock the. I don't know why. I've... You've got to shim the diffs on these, otherwise, you'll knock the. Not get them and run true onto the final drive off the ground wheel. So, what you do with these is I'm doing this on the, the engine on a stand. I've got the engine pointing to the floor, it's clutch side to the floor because you shim this side. So, you put this out, you put the diff in, you get, well, you get your, your diff, your crown wheel on, you get your end casings or end caps with your new gaskets and the bolts. And what I'm going to do is I'll put the diff in with this end cap on, on the right hand side to the clutch side. Um, so it's, and push it down snug, and then we'll shim up this side, and I'll show you how to do that. So you've got your new gasket, put your end cap on. I mean, we've got new bearings in, these are new, the new style bearings. The old ones have a thr uh, thrust bearing, I've got the old one here which is labelled thrust on one side uh, and if you're using these ones can you see that there? will it focus? no it won't, is it? it'll say thrust hold on I'll cut this bit it won't focus come on can you see that there? Nope. That, that says thrust there, you can't really read it. But they need to be on the outside of the diff, so it'll be like that. They've got a plastic cage on the inside. And you put them on that. And these ones should be shimmed up to 4 thou. These new style, with the, they're not sided, so they don't have thrust written on them, they go on either side. They've got a steel cage in. Um, these need to be shimmed up to one thou. Uh, I don't know what that is in metric yet. I'll convert that later. But first off, you put your diff in the in the hole. Doing this one-handed, awkward. You get your end cap on, and you torque the bolts up so it squishes the, the gasket to the right thickness. You torque that up. So hold on, let's go to. Needs to be torqued up to. 24 new meters, which is what my favorite torque wrench goes up here, so I'll talk that up. So I got my torque wrench set at 24, with 11 mil on, because I don't have Imperial yet. So you just torque them up, because then that'll set the, the right side, right thickness, so you can shim it up properly. This is really awkward to do one handed. See, that's talked. That was talked. Talked up. Ideally, you'd want to be doing this on the bench with the box on the on the bench, but I'm not doing that, so I'm doing it this way. You got your diff in. Then you send the diff all the way down on one side, onto this side, um, and you shim up this side. And the shims look like the shims look like these. They are. I've got two. There's two in there. Don't know what size these are. I'll have to look them up. Um, but they come in different thicknesses. I think I've got 6 thou, 10 thou, and 20 thou ones. So obviously the 20 thou ones will be the thickest, and 6 thou ones will be the thinnest. And what you want to do is just use shims until you get the right size thickness through there with the feeler gauge. I'm not sure. I'm going to show you how to do. But to start with, we'll do it without any shims in at all. It gives you an idea of what sort of thicknesses you need to be going for to start with. So with both casing, casings on, I think I've put this one in the wrong round. No, I haven't. Um, you get the, the other side on with your new gasket. Torque it down the right side. Torque. And what you want is 
this gap between should I focus it won't focus there we go so you want this gap here to be in millimeters it's as two it's between one and two thousand so zero point zero five mil is about the right size it's about it's it's in I think it's in between the calculation we've just done so as you can see nowhere near so what I want to do get my shims I think I'll put 20 thou them in start with the biggest and we'll go up go down from there or we'll try the biggest see what happens you go smaller we can we need to go bigger we can I'm just stack them up so get this back off this is a bit of takes time take this back off put your shim in try again and just keep repeating so I've got me shim one is you can see I've got two shims here. These are the twenty thousand ones, I think. Pretty sure they are. Um, you just put one in. Put one in. There you go. That sits in there. Make sure it doesn't fall out. That's one good thing about doing it this way is the shim. If you've got it on a bench, it can fall out like that. So, oop, again, like that. It's buggered. If you crank it, it's buggered. Um, so put that shim in. There's two ways you can do it. Some people say you start low and go up. I like to start with nothing, see what sort of gaps you've got and then if you want if you're close you start low, if you're miles away you start high. So put me cut back on, put back down again. This is where I have my GoPro I guess my GoPro will be good. But I don't have one so I'm using my phone still. Back in. Rinse and repeat. Uh, what was this? So there you go, that's the first shim in there, you can see. And it's still miles off. I'm going to put another 20 thou in, see what happens. If it gets a closer, it gets a closer, and then just keep going and going and going. I'm not going to carry on filming the rest of the bums. The video is going to be 15 20 minutes long just from shimming alone. So I'll get that done. So I'll get it shimmed up and show you when I'm finished. So here it is, she's shimmed up now, just nice and in place. Um, I've got, I don't know what you can see in there, it's going to be really hard to see. Can you see? I've got two twenty thou and a six thou in there. And my feeler gauge is just pinching, so I can't do it one handed. But you, you start, it starts in just lovely, just has ten, tension on it. Can I get that in there? I can't do it on either, two seconds. There you go, she just zips in, just lovely. So there's enough tension, you can see obviously, it's holding it in place there. You've got to, you've got to pull it out, but it's just got, it's not tight, tight, it's not pinched, it's not going to damage your feeler gauge. That's it shimmed up. So now, pull the caps off, put the, the diff casing on with a new gasket on, put a new seal in the, um, select a rod, bolt, back, bolt it, bolt it back, bolt, bolt it all back up. But um, if you didn't shim it up, obviously you'd have a lot of play left and right of your diff, which it's going to slap around, knock around, make lots of horrible noises, and it will eventually you destroy you destroy bearings. You'd probably destroy your crown wheel and pinion. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's quite an easy job to do. It's not horrendous, but that's coming from someone who knows what they're doing. So, yeah. Again, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not confident, don't do it. But if you're confident enough, give it a shot. So I've got the Uta case, the gas new gaskets in, Uta case are on. Uh, put those two in, they're just finger tight. Put these ones in with the lock tabs on. I always like the lock tight stuff, so. Just because you never know, especially on things like this, that. Vibrate quite a bit. I just want to have that extra security that it's not gonna come undone. There you go, so a little bit of Loctite on. Throw them in the hole. One handed, and doing this left handed, it's hard. There we go. Just like that. Find them in, and we'll talk them up. What we're gonna do is go with that one, that one. So it pulls it in nice and square. I can't remember what talks it doesn't be too soon. So the diff housing covers on. Uh, I put the new gaskets in. 
I had to put them on with a tiny smear of Derkar. Yellow and Derkar, it's the best seed I've ever used. Um, not too much, just so very thin, smear it around nice and flat so it gets on, holds caskets in place nicely, and it also gives a nice seal I've found. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have any gasket material, or see like that. So if you bought the, the new, oh, this is just on hand tight by the way. Um, this is on hand tight, let's see. Uh, so, once that's on, clean this off, because if you've got a little tag there, like that, if that's sitting there, obviously the gasket's not going to sit down flat, so I've got a new razor blade. And just you just as smooth as you can, make it off like that. Obviously, it's better to go away from the gearbox, but I'm right handed, so. If there's any, try not to cut yourself. Just like that. Uh, come on. As you can see there, just takes it off. Cuts off lovely and smooth and clean. Take any debris away from the internals of the gearbox. So I'll do that on both sides. And also, while you got it apart, make sure you haven't lost that. Um, if you've already got it apart, I'm guessing you already know that this indent plunger's there. Uh, if not, be very careful because the indent plunger's there. You don't want to lose your, your spring and your ball bearing. So just take, make sure it's nice and smooth and clean. So you get a good gasket seal. And then we'll take the, the old ring out of here. That's your ring for your indent plunger. Let me give that a quick wash down. Got dirty. Some dust in here. Um, and we'll get the new O ring, which is in the seal pack here. Three minutes. So I've got my new O ring here, which is going to go into that hole there. A little tip. Put that there, where it's nice and clean. A little bit of grease. This is just some uh, red rubber grease. It won't attack the silver. A little bit. Come on, maybe. Nope, it's not coming out. Where's it not coming out? Okay. Oh, there we go. So, got a little bit of red rubber grease. And if you put some on the o ring, I'll have to pause it and do it. So, I just got grease on my screen there, but as you can see, I've got a little bit of grease on that. If you push it in, the grease will hold it in place. Nice. And you don't have to worry about it falling out. See that? Lovely. So that's in there, nice and snug. Next plan is get the side casings on. This is the this one here is the um clutch side, which is gonna be holding that in. So this as I was talking about my dirt car, I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see it's a very light smear, it's not like some people get the the squeezy cans and Put it on and they see it squidging out. It's literally a tiny little bead smoothed out with your finger. Put the gasket on with, especially once this one's been torqued up. I like to put some on because then once you know it's been torqued, it's just gonna seal that a little bit better. Like that. And it's not gonna be enough to knock out the, the diff. Yeah. Uh, same again, but I, like, I usually like to put it on the case itself instead of the gasket. You get to get it nice to smear out and level it out. So again, I'll do that. Again, that's a tiny smear on. Also, this little smear helps seal up the, the corners as well. So i put this on. Also, before you do anything, make sure you put this back in. This is your indent plunger. And again, a little bit of grease on the end of the ball will help it stick to the spring. Again, I'll do that. And a little bit of grease on the end of the, the ball bearing helps it seal, sit. What seat while you push it in. That goes in there like that. Maybe. Might want it. That's that one to stick in. Might want that to get there we go. Make sure it just pushes in. Well, this is gonna be in tension on on the spring because it's um spring loaded to hold the ball in place for make sure your your gear link just stay in, in the right place. So but next I need to answer this and just put your, your side case on. It's also worth noting that, remember on this side, the clutch side, you've got your exhaust bracket, which means you've got three bolts 
that are longer than the others. So make sure you use the right ones for the right holes because otherwise you'll bottom you'll find out you'll want one or bottom out and if you try and nip it up it'll just pull the thread through the case and, and knock it. As you can see there. Exhaust bracket, non exhaust bracket. So all the bolts are in. Make sure they're all in and just seated. There it is. We go. One, two, three, four, five. So it pulls it in square. So one, two, three, four, five. And next, I'm just go up and talk them up. If I can get me my on. There we go. So I'm going to talk this one up. Click, click. And the top one. Click, click. And this bottom one. Click. That one. Click, click. And last one. Click, click. Now we'll just do that again. Just make sure we'll see it tight. Let's see this one. Click. them all nipped up. Get that one in. Don't know if you can nip them up. Okay. There, so next one, this one. Don't think I'll film it. You get the idea. Just same again as that side. But you don't have to worry about the exhaust ports, which is good. So yep, yeah, that's that. Same again on this side. And then you all got to go. Oh, and talk these ones up. Yep, so make sure your shims are still in place. In the right place, so not before you, before you nip it all up. Put your case on, put your bolts in, and where you go. Oh, I'll talk these ones up in a second. So put these in, I'll put so the torque in, so put these in, put your bolts in. Two, three. Oh, no, it's not. I've got that wrong one there. Or five. So wind them up. Finger tight first. Right. Oh, that's a bit tight. I think that might be an exhaust watch then. Okay. I've got one more wrong. I'm not going to do this. I think it is. Shouldn't be. Just be some stuff in the threads. I should go in there. Bag. I'll try that out in a minute. Get this one in the chair. Measure against that one. Oops. Oh, that was lucky it landed in the pot. Couldn't do that again if I tried it. It didn't work that time. Mm -hmm. Last thing I do want, obviously, I should have said before, this I already sent down so it was seated before I talked these up. I just need to double talk. I've talked these three up, just again, in a pattern. Um, with the and next I'm going to do these 14mm bolts. Again, I can't find any other torque settings apart from it wants to be 25 for these. So, one, two, three, four, and again, and go around twice just to make sure it's seated. Two, three. Same ones, and then go around again with the 11. And this one. Talk, talk. 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 And we'll just double check these ones. Uh, everything's talked up. Yep. 
Yep. Um, cups back on. That's an easy job, just knock them in. What I'll do with that and this video fitting this or oh, this uh, drive shaft or drive shaft um with a video of fitting this gear linkage seal. Uh I'll do that separate. Otherwise it's gonna be a very long video. I forgot to say as well, um once you finish just give You've got a wiper on the edges, get the any excess seal off. Looks nice how it's done. It looks. Yep, you get the idea. Just do that and then you're all done. I hope it helps. If you've got any questions, put in the comments. Um yeah. Can't wait to get this thing out on the road. And hopefully Mark's very happy with it with the new diff in. See you in a bit. Following off my last video, which I've only just done, um of, oh, I forgot to knock these tabs off on the last video. I'll put these on. And just before you finish, you should always knock these lock tabs over. Some have them, some don't. Just get a little knock, knock your tool, which I don't have on it, two seconds. So get your little knock and stick, and you're on your tabs, and just... Carefully send them out, just so it locks it in place. As you can see. All done. Oops. There you go. So that's those two done. Got these two to do, but then there. Yeah. And then next video, I'll put fit this seal and the drive shaft cups. All right. So following on from last video, I'm going to be fitting these new uh, gear linkage seals. This is an upgraded sit kit from Mini Spares. I think most people do them now. It's an Ali, Ali um, like shim spacer with an o-ring in it which sits on the outside and then you've got the standard seal and the gator that goes on the outside so what first you want to do is go to find a nice socket which is the same size as your shim uh, see. now that was a bloody good guess so that's just a I think it's a 19 actually is it a 19? no an 18 I've got my 18 mil front drive snap on socket which is the perfect size for this. And again, I do utilize a little bit of red rubber grease. Just uh, helps lubricate it in, make sure it doesn't nick. Put some of that on the seal. As you can see, I've got my red rubber grease smeared around. I've run the roll ring around so it's nice and covered. Just put that in there. So it sits in, fits in nice. Get your little socket and tap that in. I'll need two hands for this. But just make sure it's seated nice. Make sure it's not going to twist the ring as it goes in. So that's the other ring locked in, I just literally hold it in place and tap tap until you hear it hit until it's home. Same up with the new seal. Again, red rubber grease. Again, I've put some red rubber grease on that. Make sure it's made all aero nice and nice and uh, covered inside and out. And then we'll get me socket again. Should be able to push this one by hand if I'm perfectly honest. Maybe not. I'm gonna use, use my knock stick again. That's it on. Just uh, again, tip your tap, knock her in. And then the gate there, that just sits over the top. If you put it over, I don't have a split pin on it. There's a split pin, I need a split pin. Um, I'll use this a little more for a minute. No, I won't, that's stuck to something. Um, so once you've got your gate on, Get a, a split pin, cut a pin, whatever you want to call them. I call them split pins. You just gently throw it through there. Get your press down. That's a place you kind of lose it. Because I know I would. It's a very losable thing. Uh, and I'll quickly put on the drive shaft cups. Once now I've got that in, I'll put these in. Again, red, red rubber grease. I like to put it on when I put new seals in. Just make sure everything goes together nice and easy and okay. These just literally go on and snap on with a snap ring 
as you can see the snap ring is there Put that in, make sure it locates it that's in there we'll get a rubber knock and stick or a lump of wood and a knock and stick I'm going to get the rubber knock and hammer which is in here I think. actually I use, might use this one it's a new one, I want to use it uh, where's me wood yeah, so you chunk the wood on here and hit your chunk of wood and it'll just pop in. I can't do that one handed obviously. And that's it. She's home, you know she'll, when she's home she'll change noise. Um that's it. I'm not even gonna bother showing the other side, it's exactly the same. Yeah, hope it helps. And any questions, drop a comment. If it's helped you, like the video and and subscribe if you like stuff like this because this is pretty much what I do at work. I like doing that, I like my work. But yeah. Um, check my channel, I've got other stuff up as well. Yeah, have a look, see what I've, uh, if anything takes your interest. Yeah, hope you enjoy it. Try it out